After wearing these devices for over six months now, I'm selling this one. Oh no, wait, this one? MKBHD carries two phones and I wear two watches. This is the Apple Watch Ultra, which is the top tier Apple Watch right now. And this is the Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire Edition. Both of these have dual band GPS and they're great for fitness activities. But how do they hold up in overall lifestyle? Not only fitness tracking, but also as a regular watch and just doing everyday activities that I need to do. So today we're gonna find out. Now when it comes to looks, they definitely have a variety of different looks. This is more rugged. When you see someone wearing a Garmin, you're like, that person's an athlete. They work out, they go on long hikes. But when you see the Apple Watch, they could just be like an everyday office person, but they also enjoy working out. So the looks just send a different type of message. Now I've been wearing one of these watches less and less. And the reason for that is because I got injured. So the Garmin is great for fitness and sports tracking, but when I'm not working out, there isn't much of a reason to wear it. Whereas the Apple Watch, not only is it a sports watch, but it also does a whole bunch of other things in my day-to-day -day life. So when it comes to overall use cases, I really love the Garmin because the battery life lasts forever. And if I'm doing long runs, outdoor cycling, then this is my favorite watch to put on. It's super easy to start using and the hardware buttons make it really easy to maneuver when I have gloves on and in any kind of weather or type of environment. But when it comes to the Apple Watch, if I'm doing a variety of workouts, like I love running, I love doing yoga, I love going to group fitness like Barry's Bootcamp, I love strength training. So when I'm doing a wide variety of types of workouts, the Apple Watch Ultra just does better in these. I can select the type of workout I want, it's easy to start and stop. And from what I've read online, like the quantified scientists, the Apple Watch has the most accurate heart rate sensor out of all the wearables out there, as long as you wear it pretty tight on your wrist. So later today, we're gonna test out the fitness features. We'll do an outdoor and indoor run, and I'll show you reasons why I actually prefer the Apple Watch. But first, I wanna put these head to head in an everyday lifestyle situation. Let's go buy a cup of coffee. Now, if you live in a major city like New York or London, you have Express Transit on the Apple Watch over the Garmin. So all I need to do is tap my watch, I don't have to press any buttons, and I can go in. And now we'll navigate to the coffee shop. Now when it comes to the first the lifestyle factor is navigation and maps. When I'm trying to navigate somewhere, I love using my watch. So I'll be like, navigate to Citizens of Chelsea. And now I can get walking directions straight on my watch. Sometimes it can be a little buggy. All these devices are just a little buggy, so I have to reset. Navigate to Citizens of Chelsea. Usually it works on the second try. And then I'll have a visual map of how to get there, and I can just use my voice to navigate without having to type or press any buttons. Now that we're about to make a left turn right here, the watch will vibrate to let me know we need to change directions. And yes, the Garmin does have maps and top topography stuff, but it's really hard to use. The frictionless experience of the Apple Watch as well as full integration with my iPhone is just next level. I love using my voice to figure out where I need to go. I'll use this when I'm walking, driving, and even sometimes when I'm running. Oh, good, how about you? Uh, <laughs> can I actually get an iced latte? And I can do Apple Pay, right? Yeah. All right, cool. The other thing I love is using Apple Pay on my watch. Garmin does have Garmin Pay, but you can't put all like your American Express and certain bank accounts. And then you have to type in a whole code on the touch screen. It's a whole process. It's just too complicated. I want frictionless. <laughs> What's up, son? How you doing? Why is there a camera in my face? Why not? Aren't you a content creator, buddy? <laughs> what device is on your wrist? My Apple Watch? SE. Why not a Garmin? Uh, I have a MacBook, an iPhone, and an iPad. The Apple ecosystem. So this is enemy number one. I love my iPhone, but I also hate it. But knowing that this is an extension of my iPhone and I can leave the house without my phone and still be able to do like 70% of the tasks I need to do, that's one of the main reasons I love the Apple Watch. It's like the Garmin's nice if I'm gonna go for a run, but if I'm trying to do anything else outside of my life, it's a bit too complicated unless I have the watch. Like I can't leave my phone at home and just go about my day with the Garmin. Bam. Bam. I have a meeting. <laughs> I gotta run. <laughs> so there were way too many moments where I'm just doom scrolling on my iPhone and being able to leave my phone at home and not have to worry about having a simple, easy distraction is very valuable. I have a cellular on my Apple Watch Ultra. I can do messages, phone calls, WhatsApp, and all the basic necessities right on my watch, which is super valuable. Whereas on the Garmin, there's no cellular, so I can't receive notifications or messages or anything like that. There's one tip that I will empower you is turn off all your notifications. I don't have my watch buzz because it can be distracting, but if I want to view things, I can. That way it's not buzzing, but the notifications do show up on the watch if I ever want to swipe the notification center down. And now cellular does have international roaming. I haven't tested it yet, but if you want to see that, let me know. And those aren't the only features that I love, like music control. If I want to stream music, I can pick any song I want, podcast, and I can stream it straight from the watch. I can change the volume, hit next, and I have freedom to access any content wherever I am. Whereas on the Garmin, I have to pre-download my Spotify playlist, so it requires a bit of planning. And as someone who's very unorganized, I'm just not good at planning things. But those aren't my only favorite lifestyle features on the Apple Watch that the Garmin doesn't have. There are some that I use every single day at home. So let's head back and let me show you what those are like. 
in this day and age, you really need your iPhone just to operate in the world. So having a watch that can pretty much do 70% of things is extremely valuable. This watch has saved me a lot of time, right? When I leave my phone out of the space, I'm able to focus better. I'm able to get more work done, but I'm still able to stay connected for those emergency scenarios for any kind of messaging or phone calls that I absolutely need to. If I'm gonna go work at a coffee shop for a couple hours, I'll just take my watch with me and my laptop. If I'm gonna go grocery shopping or for a run, I can easily get away with just having my watch streaming music. Whereas if I did the Garmin, it's great for tracking the workout but I can't do these little extra things. And if the Apple Watch is just good enough for the fitness side, it makes my life so much easier than everything else. Now that we're home, there's a couple of factors that just make my life a little bit easier and save me a little bit more time. When it's time to load up my computer, I just go ahead and press a key. It automatically unlocks with my Apple Watch. And then I love playing music, so we got the new HomePods. Play some Kygo on Living Room. Sorry, I can't do that on your Apple Watch. Okay. <laughs> Play Kygo on Living Apple. Sorry. <laughs> what? Siri, play Kygo. Now playing Kygo. Okay, here's Kygo. <gasps> All the devices. And what I can do, I can open up the now playing on my watch, and now I can control the volume. I can hit next, and I can play pause the music straight from my watch, and I can do that with any HomePod speaker system inside my home. So since we're a devout follower of Steve Jobs and Tim Cook that have the Apple TV remote on my watch as well, and I can actually go ahead and pick the app I wanna use. If I wanna play a YouTube video, I can go ahead and easily select that right here and control the volume of our TV, play pause, and do whatever I need to do directly for my watch. So this is a remote for our TV straight on my watch. I don't need to pull out any other device or even find the Apple TV remote because I have no idea where that remote is. Can the Garmin do that? No. Great fitness tracker though. The one thing Garmin does have on the Apple Watch is battery life. So right now when I scroll down here, it says an 18 day battery life, which is absolutely insane. When I was traveling around Europe for over a week, I didn't even take the charger with me. I just wore the watch and it survived the entire time. So that's a big value add is I don't have to carry the charging cable, especially on long trips. Oh, hello. Hey, Steve here. How's it going? This is Shervin. guy. Yep. I'll be there in just a few minutes. All right. Sounds good. Boom, I can easily take phone calls straight on my watch, like for quick and fast things like that, I can just answer it. That was totally unplanned. But that's one thing, this does not have a microphone or a speaker. Uh, but if you wanna take longer phone calls, you can use your AirPods and it makes it super simple to take a long phone call on the Apple Watch. The one thing the Garmin watch has is a way better battery life. But then when I do need to charge it, uh, it does have a little port on the bottom here and you just find the cable and you go ahead and plug it in. Sometimes it can be a little finicky, but once you figure it out, Boom, now it's charging. Whereas the Apple Watch, I do like the experience a lot more. It's a lot easier to take this on and I'll put it off. Is you just slide it on, it's magnetic, and as soon as it slides on, it starts to charge. The one thing that you do need to do is change your behavior when it comes to charging. So I do charge this twice a day, whether I'm at my desk, I know, oh, charger's right there, let's put it on. When I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna shower, sometimes I'll put it on the charger while I do that. The biggest danger with that is sometimes I forget to put the watch back on. I've gotten so used to having my watch, I feel naked without it. But if you're someone who's just starting out, like Colt, he'll put his, Apple Watch on the charger, and then it'll be there for like a week. <laughs> but there are so many different value adds that I get with the Apple Watch now that I almost feel like I need to have it with me at all times. Now that the caffeine has hit our system, we're gonna go to the gym and work out and test the running and fitness features of both of these watches. All right, we are here at the gym and I'm gonna get my warm up in. And I honestly don't use my Garmin watch when I'm at the gym. If I'm doing any kind of strength training, yeah, there's a feature on here where I can measure reps and my heart rate and all that. But the Apple Watch, I just like to start the workout, end the workout, and just get kind of like a average heart rate. I don't even look at the data. There's just too many advanced features. It's a bit too complicated. I want something frictionless, and that's why I typically prefer the Apple Watch when I'm strength training. The Apple Watch actually has a couple apps where they do have rep counters built in, as well as like custom personal trainers. So my favorite three apps are Fitify, Future, and Copilot, and all of those integrate inside of your Apple Watch, and you get a personal trainer, they'll count the reps for you, and you have an entire workout plan on your Apple Watch. So I love the whole app store concept where you can actually download any kinds of apps like that. Garmin does have the Garmin Connect Store, which is kind of like their version of the App Store, which is nice. If you do want more data, more metrics, you can download an app called Workout Outdoors on the Apple Watch. I don't use it because it doesn't integrate well with the action button and a whole bunch of other features in the Apple Watch Ultra. I prefer using the native apps on the Apple Watch, but those are there if you really need more metrics and getting something similar to the Garmin. It just doesn't work as clean. Now that we're warmed up, we're gonna go run on the treadmill. And there's one thing that I love that the Apple Watch does that the Garmin does not on the treadmill. So over the past six months, the one thing that I do trust the Garmin over my Apple Watch Ultra is distance and pacing. Even though they're similar, 
and they both have multi-band GPS, so it's more accurate in a city with tall buildings. For some reason, the Garmin just feels more accurate. So anytime I'm doing any kind of outdoor workouts, whether it's running, cycling, hiking, I tend to slightly prefer the Garmin data, but the Apple Watch is just as good. But then when it comes to indoor, there's something on the Apple Watch called Gym Kit. So we're gonna use this treadmill and it's actually gonna automatically sync my Apple Watch heart rate and distance pacing to the treadmill. Whereas the Garmin, it won't do that, but I can calibrate it after the fact and tell the Garmin how much I ran and then it'll update distance pacing afterwards. So one of my favorite things right now is doing zone two running. So we're gonna set up a quick zone two run right now on this treadmill and I'll be able to see my heart rate on the treadmill screen, which is super helpful rather than having to look at my wrist. Let's get on the treadmill. All right, so as you can see here, it says connects to Apple Watch and Samsung Galaxy Watch, NFC right here. I'm gonna tap my Apple Watch right on the NFC. It's gonna beep, it says, oh, connecting. And now it says connect. I can select which one I wanna do. I'm gonna tap indoor run. It's gonna say start the treadmill. So now my watch is connected. As you can see, the same icon on my watch shows up here to show that it's connected. I can hit the quick start button. Uh oh, it's gonna go. And now the workout's gonna begin. My heart rate from my Apple Watch is gonna show up on here. Uh, and we're gonna do a little zone two run. So I know my heart zone two is like, 136-ish, so I'm gonna plan to stay around that. Get about a 45 minute jog in. And then all the data is gonna be super accurate because it's gonna send the distance pacing to my watch. Now the one thing I love about both watches is very large screens. You can set it so some of the data on the Garmin does show a lot bigger, especially when you're running on a treadmill or outside. It's hard to glance at your watch, right? Because you're moving, your head's bouncing, your arm is bouncing. So I try to have the least amount of data, the largest font possible, so I can quickly glance. Because if you're running outside and you try to figure out what you're doing and touching buttons and things, you're gonna trip, run into someone, fall over something. Just be mindful when you're running that you can't look at your watch for too long. And then when it comes to Strava integration, the Garmin is obviously way better. It's cleaner, it's faster, and the data syncs much better. The Apple Watch does sync as well. I have it set to manual, you can have it as automatic. But sometimes in my runs, the distance is totally off from what's actually in the fitness app, which is kind of weird. I don't know if that's a Strava or an Apple thing. And the one value I love about the Apple Watch that the Garmin does not have is Apple Health Kit integration. I use a ton of other Apple Health apps and if I can pull the data from HealthKit and read it and do other things with it, it's super valuable. Like if when I have a CGM on or the whoop strap, I can have the start and end times of my workouts, my sleep. So the Garmin does sync all that data. You don't get as much like the sleep stages into the Apple Health Kit, but the Apple Watch will sync everything. It's just well integrated into that ecosystem. The last piece is VO2 max. This is one variable I've been trying to measure recently just to see where's my cardio fitness at. And on the Garmin, it seems to update it less often. It was like at 52, it's dropped to 50 now. Whereas in the Apple Watch, every time I do an outdoor walk or an outdoor run, it tends to update. And I've dropped from like 52 down to 47 now. So it's kind of motivating to see that. It's also disappointing, but it's like, hey, I need to make sure I get back into running. I need to make sure I'm doing my cardiovascular workouts. So I really love seeing that inside the health app. Oh my God, is that my son? Excuse me, what are you listening to? What are, what are you listening to? Kai how, how much do you pay for rent? Cent. How much do you pay for rent? <laughs> All right, now that we've finished our run here, and I think my son has another hour to go. He's training for uh, the ultra marathon next week. We're gonna head into sauna because we love heat therapy, and there's one big factor that the Garmin just absolutely destroys the Apple Watch Ultra, and that's when we go inside the sauna. All right, we are now in the sauna, and the one valuable thing about the Garmin is it never overheats in the sauna, whereas the Apple Watch Ultra here in, the, in New York, it's like limited to 190, so I, it never overheats, but when I go outside, it definitely does overheat. Sauna, start. Mind the body, start. Bam. All right, we just finished the sauna. Now we're gonna head home and go to bed. That's pretty much a full day. I forgot to mention, there's one thing I love about the Garmin and that is the little light. So I can double tap and this light turns on. And this has seemed to be very useful at night, especially when I'm like trying to find something in my house or apartment and it's dark, I can turn this on. I got a little spotlight. Yeah, the Apple Watch has it, but this is just a double tap button so you can turn it on. So it's just a frictionless experience. That's the one thing Garmin has overall. Now when it comes to sleep and recovery, you can use the most accurate brain scanning device here to get the best metrics for your sleep. But let's be honest, do you really want to put this on every night? And overall, the sleep and recovery features of the Apple Watch and the Garmin are actually really nice. I do love that I can see my, if I'm detraining, overtraining, or recovered well on the Garmin. And then on the Apple Watch, I like to use four different apps. My favorite one is HRV for training athletic, chipper, and training today are also really great. For the most part, you just need to set your sleep and wake times on both devices, and they'll measure your sleep, give you your sleep stages, your heart rate, heart rate variability, your oxygen levels, and all that information can be useful. I don't look at it on a daily basis, but it's valuable. For example, when I got food poisoning one day, I was able to see that my body temperature went up almost four degrees. So it's good to have that information just in case, and 
that stayed elevated for a consistent amount of days, I'd probably go see my doctor. Garmin has some unique features that I really love, like a race predictor. It'll tell me right here, hey, your 5K prediction is 24 minutes. It's got a body battery and a stress feature, so it'll say how much kind of energy do I have left throughout the day, as well as how much stress I'm inducing throughout the day. This can be valuable, but don't let this decide how you feel. How you feel is decided up here, plus some other factors. But what I think is super interesting is the Garmin lasts a lot longer than my Whoop strap which is probably the most touted recovery feature. So if there was one scenario where I would replace a device on my arm, it'd probably be replacing my whoop strap with the Garmin. But the main reason I stopped wearing my Garmin is because I got injured and because I'm not running and the lifestyle features on the Garmin are not as good as the Apple Watch. And it just kept yelling at me that I'm detraining and it made me feel really bad. So I took my Garmin off and I haven't worn it for like three weeks now. When it comes down to it, my overall thoughts is the Apple Watch is great for your fitness enthusiasts. It's good enough for most athletes, but if you really need specific features on the Garmin, if you really need that extra battery life and you don't wanna charge it at your desk every day, then the Garmin is the way to go. I found that the extra features on the Apple Watch are just so valuable. They save me so much time. They make my mental health better. They track my overall physical health just enough where the Garmin is essentially not necessary. If you do plan to buy either one, use my affiliate links down below. It helps support the channel. And since you enjoyed this video, go watch my comparison of the Whoop strap with the Apple Watch Ultra linked right here. Good night.